We're back. We're live. We're here with ThinkTech. Uh, we're having a ThinkTech talk on Monday afternoon in the 3 o'clock block with Rob Bertolf uh, with Surrounds Me, which is a, what, brand new company. It's actually a uh, company part of, um, we're part of the Blue Startups Accelerator, oh, last yeah. cohort. I want to ask you about that. Oh, apologize. Yeah. And uh, we were really about this idea of kind of crowdsourcing or automating to a degree social marketing, so embracing your advocates. Embracing your advocate. <laughs> you know, you've got to make your enemies closer than your friends sure, or something like sure. that. Sure. <laughs> okay, so we're calling this show the next level of social media in Hawaii. And um, you got to appreciate that, that Rob is very skilled. Uh, some people would say brilliant beyond description, but okay, we'll just say very skilled uh, in this area. He's been doing it for a while. And now the news is uh, that he is a blue startup. And uh, we want to ask him how that, how that worked and what his background is and what his project is, okay? So that'll be the first part of our show. Sure. Um, so all the live streaming people out there, tell them, Rob, um, you know, what happened? You got into the Blue Startups. This is a happy thing? It's a very happy thing. Um, I have a lot of different kind of ideas and a lot of different software that I've been kind of sitting on. And, and um, you know, my partner, Ann Boots, wanted to uh, take one of these and, and, and bring it to the light of day. So um, so we joined the Blue Startup Accelerator. Uh, it was a really great experience. Uh, it was really kind of um, it brought us together with a lot of Hawaii's top minds, uh, from, uh, just phenomenal. Uh, mentors and um, you know Bill Spencer uh, I know is a friend of yours who's, who's uh, one of our mentors and, and uh, an advisor for surrounds me it's been incredibly valuable for us mm -hmm. and um, really in a Who nutshell um, Steve Sue mm -hmm. is also an advisor for us um, and um, we've been able to leverage experience from you know people that have you know IPO billion dollar companies to people that have run you know very successful businesses here in Hawaii. So you know the the mentors that that Blue Startup you know connected us with was extremely valuable. So the Blue Startup deal is you are going to do the technology. That's yes. yours. Nobody can do it quite like you and your partner. Um, and though those guys are going to help you with sort of shaping it into a business mm -hmm. and trying to make money with it. Correct. That, so they, they don't really necessarily understand the interstices of your code or right. you know of your of your you know detailed approach to things. Right. What they have a really good understanding of was the pitch. Right. They're able to take an idea, help us refine and evolve that idea to the yeah. point where it's something that's communicatable to a potential investor. And they're working with you on that right now. Uh, so we were actually part of their their first cohort, um, and so we, I guess, uh, graduated. I guess you'd say um, in June of earlier this year, and I believe they're actually starting their their next cohort now. Okay, yeah, they just selected seven more. So you were the original cohort. Yes. And and so in order to get into that, you competed with a lot of other uh, applicants at the time, um, and you su succeeded because uh, the people that looked at your application for status as as a blue startup decided that you were. Mm, you were a likely candidate to succeed in business. It looks like they uh, they look at a couple things. One is having a strong tech co-founder. One is having a strong business you know um, you know leader uh, in that. And um, so it looks like we we checked off the boxes. They definitely want to have something that's scalable um, and something that um, you know is uh, you know a good fit for their program. Okay, so tell us about you and Anne. Where 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 did you come from? In, ter in terms of tech and experience and training and so forth. Sure. So I've been in the, you know, I guess the technology sector from ever since I was programming on my Texas Instrument calculator back in I don't know what what <laughs> grade that was. That's a while um, ago. And you know, after, during the military, I was a software uh, did a lot of software development for the military. Uh, in um, it, um, you know, when I got out, uh, what languages were you working? Um, the military is very much Visual Basic, mm -hmm. so ASP Classic. Um, I was. Uh, uh, you know, information management was my specialty, um, but I was able to work on some really fun projects, uh, including a project at the, at the Pentagon for the Joint mm -hmm. Chiefs of Staff and some really exciting ones along that line. So um, after I got out of the military, um, I was doing a lot in the web world, web design, and realized that it was a really inefficient process, and so I created a content management system back, I think it was 2003, I guess it was, 2004. Uh, for making web design easier, and I feel like now, you know, to fast forward 10 years, we've created another product that makes life easier, which is making social marketing more accessible, and that's really kind of the, the foundation for our new product. So what about Anne? What's her background? So Anne has been, um, you know, in the, the sales and marketing space for quite a long time. She really has a great understanding of business. So, you know, whereas I, I'd like to think that I've crossed over from technology into marketing, you know, Anne definitely uh, makes sure I stay on track when it comes to things of, you know, does this match a business objective? Does this, you know, is it something that a business could, could really use? 
Okay, so, um, and you'd prefer it that way. Absolutely. I mean, you're, you're definitely a technology guy. So, okay, so now let's talk about the project. You know, here, there's there's the people you're pitching to. Sure. Let's see the scope of your pitch <laughs> so far. What, is it, what does it look like? Go ahead. Well, let, I mean, let, let them have it. Sure. I mean, in a, in a nutshell, um, you know, what we've developed is something that makes social marketing more accessible, right? There's a, Everybody knows they need to be social, but everybody doesn't necessarily know how to start engaging and how to successfully do that, right? You know, one of the things that we've, we're talking about briefly is this idea of, uh, you know, the difference between social media and social marketing, right? Um, a lot of times it's confused and it's too easily confused. And so what we try to do is, is you know, bring out in businesses, what is your messaging, right? What are your objectives here? And how can this messaging either you know, bring awareness to an event um, or bring you know, um, further a message or, um, or a, a business objective of some sort? And so what the technology itself does is uh, has a couple different uh, factors to it. Um, but the most simplest is really just this idea that we give assignments to your advocates and more than just your advocates, also to your employees. And so we were actually uh, executing our first uh, large client right now, which has been really exciting. Um, one of the larger companies here in Hawaii, and they're using the system to have an internal campaign with all their employees to further the message about their products. So they're leveraging all of their employees, and just in the first week alone, there was, I think something along the lines of 500 social shares the first week alone, whereas you can imagine me as also as, a, as an, um, uh, as a consultant, right, you know, to get that sort of reach seems pretty crazy, right? But if I can really empower these brands to leverage their customers, you know, that really kind of takes what we could potentially do in a very strategic way to the next level. Okay, so uh, well, let's let's hesitate there for a moment, and let me examine with you uh, the whole idea about getting your your staff, your employees to leverage. This is this has not been a customary approach, has it? I mean, you wouldn't find a whole lot of companies around where the management would say to the staff, leverage this on social media for us, right? It, it seems like that's not the, the, the rule of the day. It really isn't. And what's interesting to note is that a lot of businesses will have a social media policy that really doesn't do them any favors. Their policy is just pages and pages of thou shalt not. And what the policy really should be is a simple policy that says, hey, we encourage you to do this, 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 and this, but use your common sense and you're gonna be held accountable for whatever you say, but you know, here's how you can help spread our, our message. Okay, and so why, important now, why if I were a, uh, an employee of the company, why would I do that and how exactly am I accountable? I mean, is, it, this is, a, is, is there a metric involved here somehow? Mm -hmm. Suppose I decided I'm, you know, I'm a little retentive and I don't want to do that and I'm mm -hmm. mad at somebody. Mm -hmm. So I say, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to do that. I'll do something else, but not that. And it's, it's actually okay. Um, you know, there is um, some pretty clear guidelines and what, you know, that have been evolving in some, some of the, um, uh, the case law that's been coming out of, you know, what you can and can't expect or force or ask. But at the end of the day, if you just, you know, create the assignment that's appropriate to your to your audience or whatever that's your employees or or your or your customers. You know, more than likely they're going to do that, right? I mean, a lot of um, you know the cool thing about showing up to work to a job that you love is that you're going to want to get the word out about that job. And so by you know just giving them say, hey, here's a here's a channel for you to get that word out. If you like it, if you don't, that's okay too. And you can you can um, kind of add some incentives to that. So you can do an employee appreciation. You can do kind of a little, you know, you can you can add it where our software actually tracks points. So every time that you do one of these social tasks, we track that, whether that's visible to them or just seen internally to the to the brand. Uh, we actually are tracking that. Oh, enter the software now. So <laughs> the this, this, isn't, this isn't entirely for love on a completely voluntary basis. It you track it. You can encourage it, and you can. Uh, you can make metrics on it to see if they're really doing it and how well they're doing it and so forth and what kind of effect you're getting from it. Absolutely. When you look at social marketing, you know, it's got to be analytically backed, right? I mean, when you look at a lot of these campaigns where if they don't set their KPIs or their key performance indicators before the campaign starts, you know, it's obviously that's a, you know, a big red flag. So this idea of, you know, we would not want ever to anybody to engage socially without having some sort of metric that backs up if what they're doing is on track or not. So if I, if I uh, you know, when you always do a pitch, you always kind of try to state the problem. Sure. You know? And so the problem is that we're not getting, the company's not getting out enough. The company has to find a way to use social media w with maximum effect. And one of the things missing is this leverage process, this leverage technique. 
And we here at surrounds.me, we have a way to do that, and we can help you and your company make maximum use of social media leverage through your own employees. Yes. Uh, so in a funny way, it's like a personnel thing, isn't it? To a degree, um, it's it's both internally and externally when it comes to the advocates and the advocates that mm. that can uh, help you out share that oh, message. So you can use external advocates also. Right. So the you customers, your your um, your partners, the people. Maybe if you're a restaurant, it could be your wine distributor. It could be you know um, a partner of of yours, another um, one of your vendors. Okay. Also could help share this. Okay. So that's the problem is it's not working well enough, and the solution is we bring all these people in to help. Mm and the the technique is we use this software to bring them in and get to empower them and encourage them to do that yeah. okay what is it so exactly what is this yeah. software? can you talk about it sure yeah it? I mean, in a nutshell when you look at that key what that key pain point is it's businesses don't have the time they don't have the knowledge and they don't have the resources typically to execute a full-fledged social campaign like they would like to and so what they end up doing is they look to you know, social marketers to come in, you know, ex, um, outside social marketing consultants to come in, which is a good thing. Um, but a lot of times, you know, what they're, what a social marketing consultant should be doing is really aligning you where you need to be going and staying, kind of keep the pulse on things that, that internally wouldn't have the manpower to do, like metrics and things like this, you know, really outline that, that strategic direction. What our software does has a kind of couple interesting features. One feature is um, what we call our campaign marketplace. So this idea that, um, so here's an example, um, on October 25th and 26th um, the, uh, at the Blaisdell there's going to be a social marketing summit, Hawaii Social Marketing Summit. Are you um, going to be there? Oh, yeah, actually, we'll, we'll, have, speaking there. we'll be speaking there. We actually have okay. two panels, which will be really, okay. uh, two tracks. Why did panels. I know that already? Anyway, yeah. <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> but what's interesting about that is that we're actually, we've created a, a um, social campaign to get the word out about an event. So they can go in, the organizers of the event, go in, or an event that you'd be holding, go in and they just download this campaign that says, I have an event coming up and ask them a series of questions, things along the lines of what's the daily event, is there a hashtag already, gives you some information if you don't know what hashtag is, where is it located, who would be interested in this, and you fill it out like Mad Libs, and it literally generates out a month worth of content. So you use this it's Mad Libs campaign. style. It's a whole It's between now and October 26th or whatever. Exactly. It is. Every day, whatever. Exactly. Yeah. And so rather than have to go in and create that content you may not have the time to do, we have a, a, a way of generating content in a semi-automated way. You put in all the details and it generates out the content for you. So I wouldn't say that that would be the only, the only thing that you'd lean on. When we look at kind of how the content, um, a, a really kind of um, solid social strategy when it comes to a content marketing plan, is gonna have scheduled content, which I would refer to. This idea that you're gonna be getting the word out, it's not really gonna change, you know, it's just gonna be the same, you know, the kind of reinforcing message over time. You're also going to have the communication element, you know, this, this idea of engagement. So I wouldn't say that this software, you know, completely uh, does everything you need for social marketing, right? But it definitely gives you the foundation that you may not have otherwise. It really kind of helps you out with that. Okay. So you don't have to be an expert in social media. Exactly. But you've got to just answer the questions on the form. Mm -hmm. And then it takes it from there. Mm -hmm. um, so what the user experience then, so I'm, I'm, I'm the manager of this company that wants to use your software. As I go on the screen, is it Apple and, uh, or, is, or is so it? So it's web-based. So it's it's web-based, okay, no problem. Um, and I go on the screen and I answer these questions and I tell them all about my my, my program on October 24th. Um, I push a button and that's it. Is that, am I right? That's the extent of it. Yeah, so you've connected your social accounts. You've identified what kind of content marketing plan, mini plan you want to get the word out on. You filled in the details. Yeah. It generates the content and auto schedules it out. Your release. So, so when if if the machine decides that, that on Tuesday morning at ten o'clock something's going to happen, mm -hmm. it does that. Yes. Okay. No. What about you, know, you said my social contacts? Mm -hmm. I mean, what about somebody else's social community? Is there a list here? Are you are you including some list other than a list I already have natively in my company, or are you limiting it? So, what there's a, kind of some fun tools that go through the outreach section. So the idea is that we have a, um, a tool in the software that does what I call keyword circles. It's this idea that I've, I've kind of created that it gives you a way of, of doing keyword research that will help you not only for your brand reputation, it'll help you for your search, you know, what we should be targeting search-wise for customer acquisition, as well as it'll help you with what content you should be creating. So inside the system, when you load these keyword research in, it actually identifies who's talked about these keywords and gives you some people that would recommend that you follow, that you reach out to. So it's um, this idea of generating content, 
and then you know creating assignments based on this content of hey please share this out hey please come to the event hey you know please you know uh, get you know create a video for us on this um, and then it tracks who's actually doing those assignments so it does kind of take you through this idea of creating the campaign and then um, over here this idea of executing the campaign so it includes giving instructions to people mm -hmm. to perform tasks that are that are sub subsidiary tasks like making a movie sure you're asking them to make a movie telling them what to do with the movie mm -hmm. and it's all part of the program is it going to check up and make sure the guy did the movie uh, unfortunately it doesn't necessarily do that it does have a checklist and you can kind of see what has been achieved when they when they say if they've done that task or not so it's like it's like a project uh, tool to a degree it's, it's got one many big faces campaign it really project and many things have to happen and you're going to not only give the instructions at the planet at the outset and give the instructions automatically at the outset but you're going to track it down and see what happens between now and october 24th right and when and beyond so what's kind of interesting is the metric concept of you know before you start this campaign this is what how many you know this is your daily kind of engagement levels and then during the campaign Here's your engagement levels. So ideally, as we become a larger company and have much more data, the big data play says this campaign should increase your Facebook likes by 20%, which is a low-level metric. But this campaign should increase, you know, potentially even things along with share of voice and, and other larger uh, uh, indicators of success. Does it learn from what happened? Does it learn right, from the yeah. campaign? Uh, you know, that's sort of kind of artificial what we'd like intelligence to kind of thing. So that the next campaign, you know, it's got it's got some information it wouldn't have if it started fresh. We, we have a brand out. profiler, which is really an interesting tool that asks you a series of questions and identifies uh, kind of what you're looking to do. But it's still, uh, a lot of this is still kind of um, fairly new, and so it hasn't been completely flushed out yet. Okay, we'll take a short break, because sure. like, my head is spinning. <laughs> that's why. This is Think Tech Talks. That's Rob Bertoff with Surrounds.me. And we're calling this the next level of social media in Hawaii. It's about uh, his project and Blue Startups, which could change the world. We'll be right back after this break. Then we'll change the world. <laughs> My name is Dan Bauer, and I'm the general manager of the Plaza Club. The Plaza Club is Honolulu's premier business club. We're located in the heart of the financial district on historic Fort Street Mall. On the 20th and 21st floors atop the Pioneer Plaza, our commanding skylight views, along with our award-winning cuisine and service, are known as the place to do business downtown. We offer professional as well as social events and programs to our members and their guests, all tailored to enrich their professional and personal lives and to give them the cutting edge that they deserve in business. Why don't you consider becoming a member of the club? Call me at 531-7788 or come see me and let's talk business and how the Plaza Club can work for you. Again, my name is Dan Bauer. I'm the general manager of the club, and I'm here for you. Okay, we're back. We're live. We're at ThinkTech. We're live streaming this show on uh, Ustream. You can see it on thinktechhawaii.com, and we're live streaming it uh, for audio on Spreaker.com, and you can hear it uh, through thinktechhawaii.com. And we'll put it on Olelo, by the by. Uh, in fact, later today, we'll put it on YouTube. It's all over the place. I hope there's no pressure on that. <laughs> That's, that's Rob Bertolf, surrounds.me. We're talking about the next level of social media in Hawaii. So, you know, one of the, one of the things that, that I think we need to discuss here is the concept of social media. You know, social media, I don't know, what, five years ago it was like nobody heard of it. <laughs> I mean, we, we, everybody was using email, lots of email, lots of techniques, you know, not enough techniques if you want to know my opinion, but lots of techniques with Microsoft Outlook and the Apple and so forth and various others. Um, but all of a sudden we went high octane, all of a sudden we went on steroids here with social media and now it's different. It, it grabs at the human, at the human, you know, at the population of the world. Okay, the human experience as nothing has ever in our lifetimes before. Okay, and I just want your thoughts, if you don't mind, about how social media gets out there. What is happening here that it's connecting everyone everywhere with such fantastic speed? Um, what does this mean in the development of mankind, and how does it work socially? Sure. That's a. Um that's a it's a very broad question. I think when it comes to to the answer, I think I go in a lot of different directions. But I think when if you're going to kind of boil it down, what would be interesting to note is that you know the advancement of mobile has spawned the availability for social. And so when we look at you know if mobile phones were you know had if we had jumped you know and and had mobile phones that had this uh, more rich kind of experience earlier on, I think that social would have 
come along quicker, I think. So, um, you know, there have been obviously, you know, um, a lot of movements before even mobile was too uh, predominant uh, with different social networking sites that have been around for, for years. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a tough question of how it's, you know, of, of why it has um, exploded like it has, but I think it's just access, availability. Um, it's truncated in, in most regards. A lot of times writing a letter, you know, I remember that I used to write letters when I was in, you know, in basic training and, and back in, when I was deployed. And, and you know, it takes a long time to write a letter out, but it's so much easier just to post a little, hey, I'm over here with this, and hey, I'm doing this. And so I think the frequent, the availability is, um, I guess, there. I'm, I'm really not sure, um, you know. Uh, well, but so, you know, the old argument, not to go back to this in detail, but the old argument, how can you say anything important in 140 characters? Sure. I mean, you have to have some thought process. You have to have some reasoning, some human interaction, you know, intellectual interaction. How can you possibly do that in 140 characters? Well, I think what's interesting is that a lot of the content that's sent through Twitter is not just the, the text, it's also the images, right? One of the reasons that Instagram became so popular, well, before Instagram, uh, Pinterest became so popular because it was heavily uh, image focused. And so when we look to the future of where, of where social is taking us, we have to kind of realize, wow, you know, the ones that have taken off the quickest were media based, right? Very image heavy. So I think that, you know, a picture does say a thousand words, um, but, uh, you know, I think that, uh, yeah. Okay, well, I mean, uh, this, this changes on every side of this. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, certainly I agree with the idea that the, the smartphone has made this possible. You know, uh, as the smartphone goes, so goes social media. Mm -hmm. And as the smartphone gets smarter, the likelihood is that social media will get smarter mm -hmm. and more powerful. And, and then, of course, on the, on the receiver side, um, we can reach all these people. I mean, we could theoretically reach everyone in the world in, in, in a matter of minutes, hours, mm -hmm. one day anyway, mm -hmm. uh, we could create, we could create and disseminate news mm -hmm. that would reach the entire globe mm -hmm. uh, very, very quickly, as never before, even with any of the other media that we have been, you know, developing before. This is, it's a little scary in, in a sense, um, but don't you think that it changes the way the human race works? Absolutely. When you look at just how our time is consumed, but for one, obviously it's been predominantly very social. Uh, you know, my wife always says, uh, you know, the more social I am, social media I am, the less social I am, right? You know, you show up to <laughs> events and you start true. tweeting and you start commenting and checking in and doing this and that, and, and you ignore the people that you're actually right there that you could talk sure. to face to face. It happens in my house too. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I definitely think, you know, there have been some really powerful, you know, mediums back to the bulletin board days and things like this, but it's availability, it's, uh, you know, you know, uh, the you know, decreased threshold when it comes to knowledge. And um, yeah, I think it's it's definitely something here to stay. What's also interesting to note is that, you know, just the power or the uh, recognition from the business community, right? This is not something like, you know, CB radio or something that's, you know, very niche, right? This idea that businesses have, have, have latched onto this and realized the power of this. So, and that really kind of goes back to that idea of social media versus social marketing, right? You know, uh, there was a great quote by Jay Baer that said, and this has got a lot of traction, a lot of mileage, but it's, you know, social media is, is not the conversation, it's where the conversation takes place, right? So it's this idea that all it's done it's a is- a container. Yeah, it's just created um, a new communication channel that we can now uh, market through. But I mean, what's heady about this is that, as I said, you know, you can reach the whole world in very quick time. And if you can reach the whole world and convince them that X is Y, uh, and, and they should do something, you know, you have huge political implications, mm -hmm. uh, and huge e economic implications, and huge, for that matter, business implications. If you could convince them, every one of them, to put a dollar in the mail to you, mm -hmm. okay, imagine, sure. uh, seven billion people, I think it is now. <laughs> uh, I mean, you're going to get a lot of dollars. Sure. Um, and so, th th from a business point of view, uh, social media could be the most powerful thing that ever came down the pike. Absolutely. Uh, what's also this interesting really makes you excited about it, doesn't it? It does. But what's also <laughs> interesting is that there's now the same amount of people because it's so easy. There's the same amount of businesses that are competing in the same space. And so, when we look at this, uh, you know, where is social media going? We have to take a look at you know content marketing. Having a really good strategy for your content marketing plan 
is really going to be the make it or break it in the, in, the, in the years to come. Well, it'll get even more difficult, won't it? Because, you know, people will realize what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll watch this program and understand. Mm -hmm. um, and they will get competitive. I mean, the magic word is competitive. Sure. And then everybody, you have 7 billion people competing for the attention of 7 billion people. And it's and a lockout. the magic word is noise. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> so that means you've got to do better than the other guy. Your production values have to be that much better if you want to attract some real attention. Mm -hmm. And if you do, you know, the stakes is still high for you, but if you don't, you're just, you're a speck of noise. Right, right. <laughs> I think there's going to be an evolution even further than there is now of this idea that I can't share a cat in a sunset and have it go to my, my business bottom line, right? Um, so, you know, there has to be a more evolved, and that's really, I think if you were to, if you were to sum up where technology is going, it's just going to evolve, it's going to polish, it's going to be more uh, more tangible, and it's going to be more um, you know, trackable, more measurable, right? One of the things that's been really an interesting trend in where social has been going is that, you know, when we first started off, people, you know, you just have to be out there, you've got to just do social, right? And now it's, you know, we're seeing businesses that are, are becoming a little more experienced in the space, saying, okay, where, what does my return on investment look like, right? If I'm going to spend this time, what am I getting back from that? And before it was, well, it's just kind of, you know, just you have to do it because we're all doing it. And now with things like Google Analytics has done a good job of decreasing the stuff that only was previously done by, you know, Omniture and these larger brands, it's decreased that threshold again and bring that analytics to the to the small business. So I think that we are going to be a more aware and a more targeted, focused um, social marketers going forward. So your analysis is that because of this, the, the, the high possibilities and because it's going to be, it is being very competitive, and the stakes are so high. I mean, the, this is the, the the original gold ring here, brass ring, whatever. Right. Um, you know that it's worth you putting time in mm -hmm. to add fuel to the fire, to add, you know, the, uh, the, uh, some special sauce mm -hmm. on top of social media and make it social media marketing, and use the container, as, as you said, uh, in order to achieve something that nobody else has been able to achieve. So your uh, your blue startup mm -hmm. idea is intended. Uh, you know, to do just that. Mm -hmm. You want to have, so how do you protect that? How do you, can you protect that? Well, I mean, I think the idea of getting people to do work for you has been around for quite a while. Mm -hmm. And so this idea of crowdsourcing, you know, or, or insourcing, a lot of people think, well, if I want to get engaged in social and I don't have the time, I'm going to have to outsource it. Well, it really is this idea of insourcing, you know, giving these assignments into your employees like we kind of were talked about in the top of the hour. But I think, um, you know, when you look at where things are going, I guess, um, you know, you, you, I guess you're, you're going to appreciate more, you know, the power of it and, you know, what you can get, I guess, uh, you know, how you can further that cause through a larger social reach by bringing other people with you. Oh, it's definitely worth it mm -hmm. for a company that wants to reach everyone. And it's relatively cheap, you know, per person they reach. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's relatively cheap. Um, the question is how, how you can stay on top with your product. Oh, right, sure. you know, Let's assume you go public with your product mm -hmm. and it's out there and so people say, wow, this is great. Well, the guy right down the road right. is going to have a very similar idea. It won't be an infringement because you won't be able to get the, you know, the, the depth of intellectual property protection on it. I mean, unless right. you tell me different. I'm not even uh, going to try. Yeah, so you know, th th there you go, and now right. we're in this competition again at a higher level. Well, I think you know there already are a lot of enterprise level systems that have some similar functionality. Um, you know, it's you know, can we make it more accessible? Can we make it more cost effective? And can we continue to iterate and make it a better and better product? This metric driven that lets them you know feel that they're getting value for their dollars. Gee, this is so important. You know, you're talking about the investment of time um, when it first started. Uh, all those kids, pardon me, all those <laughs> kids out there, <laughs> not you and me, of course, but all those kids out there were spending in incredible amounts of time on social media, and, and the older folks were saying, what are they wasting their time for? This is terrible. This is a game, you know. Mm -hmm. nothing, it's a social experience. It has no business implication at all. But now we've changed our mind, haven't we? <laughs> <laughs> there still are, um, yeah, definitely, there still are a lot of you know, social channels that the teens have kind of um, you know, grabbed a hold of. I could probably name off a half a dozen apps that, that most people have never heard of before that are being used daily by your teens. Uh, and we mentioned Instagram, but there's a lot more uh, CD ones as well. Um, but you know, this idea that it's definitely, you know, for me, it's all about which of these platforms, rather than kind of chasing that shiny new object all the time, which of these platforms can go back to, you know, help your business, right? Which of these platforms is going to be worth your time to, to push your, mark, your message through it? So give me a sort of case study example of a company that comes to you 
uh, and says, Rob, you know, we want to we want to use this product. Uh, how is it going to how is it going to help us? You know, and how, how do you go down the track sure. on that? Well, I think it's really multifaceted. So there's a lot of things when you look at, um, you know, one of the things that's interesting is that search, we all know that we need search engine optimization. We need to have visibility in the search engines, right? Uh, that's where people go to, to consume information. It's like their directory. So we need that visibility. Well, what's interesting is there's a lot of factors now that are, that are showing that search really kind of um, you know, is the cap, is you know, the cornerstone of social, right? Uh, or social is the cornerstone of search, I should say. And so this idea that you know, these tools not only help you know, further marketing message, but also help validate your content, your web content. So one of the interesting things we did was um, in, this recent, um, uh, you know, in this recent case study we've been working on, is we've been looking at the, the keywords that are being shared versus how massive the increase in, in their ranking in the search engines are for those keywords. Right? So this idea that not only are we you know, creating tools to crowdsource social marketing, we're also creating tools to crowdsource your SEO efforts. Right? It's an idea because there's a direct correlation there. So uh, not only can this tool help get the word out that you have a new product or an event or a service and you want to leverage your employees to get that word out, but it also can help you know, legitimate, uh, legitimize your, your search um, or your, your website and increase your search ranking. So there's kind of a lot of, I guess, values um, to that. Okay, we're going to take a short break, actually, Rob. When we come back, I'd like to ask you this question. You can think about it. It won't take you very long. Okay. But this question is, um, you know, uh, you're assuming the existence of certain social media containers, channels, what have you, products, programs, um, but it's a moving target. Yes. Uh, how are you going to cope with those changes that are happening all around you? Uh, we always like dynamics. <laughs> That's Rob Berthoff uh, in Surrounds.me, uh, which is a social media company on high octane, <laughs> on steroids, the next level of social media in a wide title of our show. This is Think Tech. We'll be right back after this break, and we'll hear his answer to that question. Okay. We'll be right back. Aloha, I'm Nicole Horry for ThinkTech. For nearly half a century, the Hawaii Foreign Trade Zone No. 9 has brought the benefits of the Foreign Trade Zone program to Hawaii businesses and entrepreneurs. DBET, the Department of Business, Economic Development and Tourism, operates Hawaii's Foreign Trade Zone program to encourage international business and economic development. The Foreign Trade Zone's mission is to increase the amount of international trading activity in Hawaii thereby providing employment opportunities for the residents of our island state. For more information, see ftz9.org. I'm Nicole Horry. Mahalo. Aloha. We're back. We're live. We're here at Think Tech Talks. I'm Jay Fidel. Uh, with me is Rob Bertoff of Surrounds.me, a social media company, or I guess a social media beyond social media <laughs> company, the next level of social media in Hawaii. And as we left it, the cliffhanger was, well, how, do you, how can you control all these elements in the social media container when they're changing all the time? You know, we talk about, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm an old fashioned with Twitter and then uh, Facebook, but, but really, the, you know, you mentioned two or three others, the graphical ones, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm sure that in a year's time, there'll be another blockbuster mm -hmm. and, and more after that. I mean, they're coming down the pike. How can you possibly wrap your program around all those things? Well, when we look at um, taking it back to the, the core objective, right? If we create a social media strategy that's business focused, that has your communication goals in mind, and really outlines where you'd like to go, you can take that message that you're trying to share and adapt it to the certain different social platforms. So I guess what we're getting at is that if you go out and you say, hey, I'm going to have a MySpace strategy, I'm going to have an AOL strategy, right? I'm going to have a, you know, a Yahoo strategy back. These are all three platforms that had, you know, significant market share in their time. Yahoo was 99%, I believe, something along that line, market, it was something, it's 90, in the 90s percentile um, back in the day. And so when you look at now, it's, it doesn't even have its own organic search. And you're looking at MySpace is, is trying to make a comeback, but that's been dead. So it's this idea that you can't, um, another good example, Vine. Vine was a fantastic application that I was really excited about and started creating these little videos, Instagram just duplicated the, the, the capability. And now I've seen myself <laughs> just using, creating videos in Instagram because it's already open, it's already there. So it's this idea that you really can't have a tool-centric social strategy. Your strategy needs to be 
big picture, where are you trying to achieve, what are you trying to achieve, and then make that message adapt to the different platforms. So, well, yeah, but you, you know, suppose, God forbid, but suppose Facebook becomes unpopular somehow, and now it's, um, it's uh, I don't know, headbook or right. something, you know, and, and uh, it's better, mm -hmm. and it reaches further, and it's faster, and all that stuff. This is entirely possible. It will it, happen. It will happen, yeah. So now you've got, you've got a whole strategy built around Facebook as one of the principal elements you know, in, the, in the campaign, um, but nobody's using it anymore. Right. And so you've got to you know, back to the drawing boards and somehow connect up with the successor to Facebook and make it work just as well or better or better. I'd like to think that I'm one step ahead. So when we created the tasks, they're all based around different kind of compartmentalized ideas or actions. So rather than saying this is a Facebook share, say this is a text share with a limitation of this many characters or no limitation. This is a media share. And so this idea that we created it down to what its core essence is, uh, rather than saying this is you know something you do through Facebook, we can actually take that same thing, let's say that Facebook goes away, and we take that same content and we're now going to repurpose it on Google+. Right? It's very similar when it comes to you know, message size and the type, of, um, you know, the type of, of message you would craft for that. So we just literally just turn off Facebook and turn on Google Plus or the new whatever comes next. They all have APIs, right? Pro programmer, mm -hmm. uh, what do you call it? Application programming interface. So, so that you can get it in the inside. And so you have to be very alert when one of those comes out or gets changed or what have you so that you can adapt your program to the latest and greatest. Facebook has been notoriously uh, awful for developers. Um, just they, they are not a, and without starting a, a gripe campaign here, they really are not a business platform, right? They're, a, they're a, a, an ad revenue platform. They don't mm -hmm. care about businesses to, for, the, for the large per part. So that's my personal belief. Uh, but you know, when you, you like LinkedIn. Um, you know, I, I think that LinkedIn is, all, is a great platform. It really, at the end of the day, if I were to choose which platform I like the most, it depends on what my ob objective is and who my target audience is, right? It comes down to, you know, if I'm trying to reach this consumer, where's their watering hole? Where do they consume their information? That helps me determine which platform I wanna, I wanna market through. But, you know, on the, on the idea of APIs, it, it really is, gets very frustrating because you have all of these kind of, um, you know, uh, relationships created with these APIs. They update the version number and all of a sudden it breaks and you gotta start over from scratch. So it's, um, it's definitely not the most simple play we could have gotten ourselves into, but it's, um, I think it's going to be really rewarding. So oh, so. oh, absolutely rewarding. I'll tell you why. One thing I alluded to this earlier is that your program is it rides on top of all these containers. Mm -hmm. You feed them, mm -hmm. and then somebody feeds you. Right. And so you're actually one level. You know, it's, it's exponential. You're one level on top of everything that has existed up to this point. And in a funny way, your program is a social media program, or called social media marketing program, whatever. <laughs> sure. Okay, and it could be, could get to be the coin of the realm right there. Mm -hmm. You know, the guy doesn't have to know about Facebook. Right. All he has to know about is surrounds.me mm -hmm. and go to that. You know? Our goal is to become a social action engine. So this idea is that if you want to complete a social task, you could do that through our platform, and it will help disseminate that to the appropriate uh, channel for you. So that's when we get a little more, um, you know, analytically driven. That's kind of our goal. Okay, where are you now on the continuum? Uh, so th this isn't easy. I can tell from our discussion <laughs> that you have to be thinking about this twenty-four by seven uh -huh. and trying to figure out every scenario. So where are you? So we've actually um, had the first version of uh, the software out in uh, July, and we took on a, a handful of clients just as a test run. And then we've been uh, evolving more features in the software right now. And so we've been, uh, like I mentioned um, earlier this month, uh, actually the first of the month we took on our first really large customer. Um, but we're- Real we're, customer, beta customer. Right, but it's uh, a, a much more significant than, than the smaller plays we've done previously. Um, but we're really not looking to open this up um, until probably our, whole, our goal is to launch at, at the uh, at the October twenty sixth social media. Why summit. are you here? You should be working. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think I've been doing since two a.m. or up until two a.m.? Yeah, you love your work, eh? Yeah. So um, so we're not available right now. Taking we're not currently taking on new customers. Um, but by all means, uh, if you go to our website, sign up on um, you know for our newsletter to stay in, in, in touch. And also, there's um, on our blog we got some really good information. Uh, some of the classes I teach over at UH, the Pacific New Media Program. I've kind of put some of that information up online as well. So there's some good resources. There. Okay, so this is going to be working in a month. Yes. And people can actually use it. It may not be the full it's going to be a limited full throated model, but right. it would be working. Mm -hmm. And you can conduct a campaign with it. Yes. 
Okay, what's the business model with them? We'll get to capital in a minute, but sure. what's the business model with your customers? How are you going to actually charge them for this software? So it's a software as a service play. So the idea is that you'll pay a monthly subscription to be in the software. Uh, there's going to be different tiers based on the amount of advocates or employees that you want to load into it and the different um, kind of the usage levels for that. Um, and then there's going to be also in-app purchases. So if you wanted to, as an example, download a campaign, um, you know, specific to, uh, you know, our ideal focus. Oh, is download that a campaign. It's like it's like the app store for social marketing is one element oh, of this I tool. see. So the campaign is like an app. Right. So our goal <laughs> is that we're actually trying to embrace the the social media community, and we're gonna, we're looking to get social marketers to sign up with us, which they can do today. In fact, we embrace people to come in right now. We've already got um, a, a good amount of um, social marketers already coming in the system right now, creating can, uh, content for us. Um, the cool thing is that you, the same way, if you were an app developer, you can create an app for the iPhone and make a dollar every time it's downloaded. Um, you can, as a social marketer, come in and create campaigns in our platform. And then if a, bit, a brand purchases that campaign, we do a revenue share um, of that. So it's this ongoing uh, kind of cycle. So that would be the upsell element to our program. And, and the, uh, this template, this campaign mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. um, can only be used on your platform. Correct. Did I get that right? Yeah, I thought I'd get that right. <laughs> that one's a deep breather. I like that a lot. Yeah. Okay, we're going to be right back. This is Rob Bertolf. Uh, we're doing Surrounds.me, a, a fantastic program, the next level of social media in Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. We'll be right back after this break for the final segment of our show. Aloha, this is Jay Fidel. You know, uh, Think Tech and the Hawaii Venture Capital Association put on monthly luncheon panel programs at the Plaza Club here in Pioneer Plaza. Our program this time is on September 26th. It's called Solar in Hawaii. We're going to examine the solar industry and see what's in it for the long haul. Uh, we have a great panel, great moderator. Uh, we'll be sending out email on this. If you want to be in our email list to receive the details, uh, check out thinktechhawaii.com. In any event, you can sign up for the program at hvca.org. Thanks. See you there. This is Jay Fidel. Mahalo. Hey, Capital, you're doing it yourself. You know, okay, we're on. We're back. We're live. We're Think Tech Talks with uh, Rob Bertoff, Surrounds.me, the next level of social media in Hawaii. Uh, and uh, I guess before the break, we were talking about uh, the idea of having a campaign as a kind of template where you download it's kind of an app, uh, and it only works with this platform. So it just strikes me that that's just another leverage point when you have third-party developers come in and make. And they can earn some money too, right? That's our goal. Uh, so we we actually have already our, our iPad app ready for the authors. So our goal is to allow an author to sit on the beach and, and load in campaigns and making money while they uh, they enjoy paradise. I mean, this idea that a lot of times you've created a campaign that potentially has worked really well in the past, or you have an idea for a campaign that you've pitched that you know is solid, but maybe um, you know you didn't win that uh, you know uh, you didn't win that bid. So the idea is you could literally take that that concept you developed, generalize some of the data, load it in our system. System. An example would be this, a really simple campaign would say, um, I have a, um, a speaker coming in to talk, right? So this idea that you would download a campaign, it would be a campaign for this day here, and you'd load in the date, the topic name, my name, maybe my Twitter handle potentially, you know, and maybe a hashtag of some of the topics that we're going to be discussing. So you just load that in, and you just click set it and forget it. And you could, if you have all of your, you say when that's going to when that's going to be. It can backtrack a number of days to start the the messaging going out. And so you could literally have a very active Twitter presence. I mean, you like you already have, but I mean, a very active Twitter presence without having to do much work. You load in the information, and it schedules that stuff out for you. Okay. Now, now even if I don't have a third party campaign template like that, I can create my own campaign yes. with your product. Mm -hmm. And then I can save that essentially as a template, mm -hmm. or I can save the other one and improve it. Mm -hmm. So I can I, I do learn. I go forward. I improve the template all the time. Every time I learn something about how I did it right or did it wrong, I'm I refine my template. After a while, my template works really swell. Is this? And then maybe I sell that. Yeah. You absolutely could. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, this is exciting. So you really look for, becoming, the, Jay look for the Jay Fidel author you bet. campaign coming out soon. You bet. You bet. Okay. Well, you got third parties already working on these things. Um, what we've actually done is, is, is hired some some social media uh, consultants to come in and start generating the campaigns. But we believe that once we've proven the model, people are going to want to create the campaigns uh, at no char at no cost. I mean, no, at no um, uh, initial in, you know um, fee, mm -hmm. and then. Um, 
once they um, have created the campaign, then they'll start making money when people start using it. So you're, you're building what amounts to is a, a, a software as a service app, mm -hmm. I mean a desktop app, mm -hmm. and then are you making it on, on the phone also? Um, as, a, as an iPad, an iPhone, it's uh, currently an responsive design, so it'll work on your phone. Oh, okay. but it's not a native app yet. No, you need more room, need more mm -hmm. geography, don't you, to work that? Mm -hmm. uh, although I suppose it could, um, and that means that you can program the whole thing. Huh? You? Um, well, we have a, uh, a fairly large team of developers that have been working uh, since. Uh, let's see, I guess it was since February. I guess it's been, and so um, here in Hawaii, um, d dispersed uh, across all around people. the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have actually kind of a, almost a 24-hour operations, which is kind of fun. Um, there's a lot of code being written and a lot of a lot of work being done. So, you know, um, I think uh, you know, I think Anne has probably cringed a few times, my business partner, a few times with me trying to explain the product because she explains it uh, in a much more concise way, uh, in a concise way through uh, through her. Uh, you know her relationship with with you know the, the, what she's got through blue startups and etc. She's also very good at just <laughs> explaining things. So I think let, allow my version just be the tech side, the tech version of this rather than the, the business objective version. Uh, but uh, yeah, sure. we're excited about the applications. So, so uh, you know, but that, that seems to be the you know the coin of the realm these days. You develop a global team. Mm -hmm. You find programmers anywhere. You develop systems to pay them, mm -hmm. um, and and you can instruct them and and mm -hmm. check their check their work and. It, it, you know, you don't have to put out. a lot of code down yourself. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, is this whole idea of the work 3.0 or the worker 3.0 and this, uh, you know, we you actually use a, uh, Odesk. And so Odesk, what, what is Odesk? Uh, O D E S K. Yeah, is uh, what it is. And it's a, it's an employee outsourcing platform that allows you to source, hire, and then manage employees through a very easy dashboard. I can actually see their screenshots so I can review their screens while they're working yes <laughs> and so and then it, it, it you know aggregates it it's um i got recently they sent me um a notification i was top five percent of the uh, employers on odesk so it was uh, really kind of a, a fun kind of little award until i realized that it just means i spent a lot of money with them what's the hourly rate in general um it really depends on the type of uh we decided for the techies out there, we, we decided to go with uh, a PHP language, based language, so Laravel platform, mm -hmm. Laravel 4. Um, it, the reason for that is that it actually has a, um, a lesser month, uh, hourly rate than you would get from a, a .NET developer, uh, typically. So, so um, I think it's .NET is more difficult? No, it's just, um, it just when it comes down to there's more people developing in PHP. Mm -hmm. So that was one of the business uh, you know, decisions. So uh, .NET is going away anyway, isn't it? Uh, there's some really strong. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm not gonna you're, say you're, anything you're to that. You're biased. No, no, I'm not. There's actually some really strong, great, plat, uh, great developer communities on the .NET platform. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a couple here in Hawaii that that I can think of right now. Derek, uh, definitely. Uh, Derek okay. is, is one of them. So if I said anything negative to that, you probably beat me up next time I saw him. Uh, no, but definitely, um, you know, it was it was a decision based on you know. What's a common language that we can bring developers in easily? That there's not a lot of learning curve. To and indeed, use. PHP is that that's global. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, uh, don't you need capital to pay all these guys? Well, um, either that or you're dipping out of your piggy bank every day. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, we we made the conscious decision not to go for capital um, at this stage for the reason, although that's something that Blue Startups would have helped us do, uh, would have would have helped that process. Uh, mostly for the reason that, um, you know. I want to be able to have a little bit more control over when I release the product, and we've refactored so many things when we should have just gone with the MVP model and, and lean startup model and just relaunch the software back. You know, it, um, I guess I, I'm really I'd rather not do that. I'd rather launch with a really solid platform and uh, you know and pay for it. Okay, well, it's a philosophical question. Sure, it's a professional question mm -hmm. too. I think. Yeah. So I guess uh, I guess the one thing that. Uh, that strikes me is, um, you know, you got to have challenges when you have all these moving parts, and uh, we'd like to peek in on your challenges for a minute, Rob. Sure. What, what are you worried about? Well, I mean, definitely from um, you know, it's an ever-evolving space. The social social software space is definitely evolving. Um, you know, definitely you know making sure that you're staying up on all the changes in APIs like we discussed. Uh, you know, managing a large workforce, putting the product out. Um, I mean, I think the real thing is just. You know, and, and this is more of a, a therapy session kind of conversation. But the real thing is just down to, you know, you know, you know, everyone says just launch it already. You know, but um, I, I 
keep doing more and more features and I keep trying to you know um, do smaller tests which we are definitely testing the software we're putting out there we're, we're getting a, you know, feedback I just you know Hawaii's small and I want to make sure that when it gets released that it's the uh, that it's something that That's people cer really like so. certainly a defensible position for sure so what is your prediction on all of this for social um, really again like I said kind of the top of the hour I, I think that social there won't be anything from the social marketing sense that's going to change drastically. Uh, from the social media sense, there's always new platforms that are the biggest rage taking off, and um, you know there will always be a lot of movement there. But I think from a social uh, marketing space, it's just really got to be focused on metrics. Got to be focused on you know determining return on investment for your time and, and efforts, which is becoming much more tangible with things like I mentioned with Google Analytics. Um, you know, really, this idea of, of crowdsourcing, insourcing, really is the, the, the next newest big kind of wave. Um, you know, it really hasn't changed too much. There's been um, a, a website I launched way back in the day um, called uh, Clocal, which took cloud scores and, and kind of shows who the top. I thought know, it was a dam on Kauai. Right? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of an interesting piece when you look at kind of where that's going is, you know, there's, a, there's an interesting conversation can be had versus influencers versus advocates and this idea that they're not always the same. I mean, they can be the same group, but a lot of times they're a little bit different and kind of where you where you focus your efforts. Um, and so, you know, a fun conversation along that line has been, you know, realizing that, you know, advocates are really the long-term approach, right? Influencers are something you need, especially to get the word out initially, but advocates are what you need to re build that relationship long-term. So, you know, anything we can do to to keep that relationship is uh, is kind of where I see social going. Yeah. You think it's going to change the world? I mean, bring the whole world together. Has. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for, even from, like you mentioned, the political sense, you've seen, you know, Arab Spring, sure, you've seen. Elections. Exactly. Um, it, it is the, you know, it, it is the, where the conversation is taking place. And your product will make it that much more powerful I'd by, like to by think so. number of degrees, yeah. Okay, that's Rob Brithoff, Surrounds.me, the next level of social media in Hawaii. You heard it here on Think Tech Talks. Thanks Thank a lot, you for your time, sir. Great to talk it was to you. It's a pleasure. Aloha. Aloha. <laughs>